I couldn't hear anyone. Matthew chapter 6. I want to read, start reading in verse 25. Listen close to what the Word of God has to say to us tonight. Because right prior to this, Jesus has just gone through a great dissertation of teaching and he's taught on everything from, you know, lay not your treasures up in heaven. He, he's given a lot of talk about fasting. He's been teaching for several chapters. He taught about prayer. He taught about giving to the needy. He, he was going through a whole lot right here for these new apostles and disciples trying to teach on them or teach to them. He taught on anger and reconciliation. He taught on divorce. He taught on uh, when you make oaths and how you're not supposed to have a retaliation. Or, or he taught on different things like the adultery. He taught on fasting, as I said. But right here he's going to teach on worry. He, he is his, when I read the red letter, it's almost like God comes down to the room with me and sits down beside me and starts to talk. That's how I feel about it when I get to the red letter edition. Listen to what Jesus said, verse 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought. Take no thought for your life. What ye shall eat, what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Take no thought for your life. Let's, let's hold it because we're going to read these verses. But I want, I want us to understand. God says if we trust him, we trust him completely. If we love him, we love him completely. And, and it's not that we're not supposed to be mindful about our, our, our body or what we're eating or what we're wearing. It's that it never gets to the level of importance as to where God's at. God's up here. Those other things are way down here. Don't worry about them. Now, I can elaborate differently and more in depth about that. Listen close. He said, behold the fowls of the air. He's talking about little birds now. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not. You don't see it. we got a field over here where they sow, they've sown beans, they've sown corn, they've sown all kinds of things. Somebody goes out there and works terribly hard to get that done. And now this year I'm not sure what they, if they're going to do anything for the fall harvest, I'm not sure. There's a tractor out there that usually implies someone's going to do something. But the birds of the air don't do a thing. Did you ever think about that? They don't have any grocery stores. Oh, yeah, they do. That's right. We've got bird feeders going. Well, you and I have to go get that seed. Jesus said, consider. He said, behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, <laughs> nor gather into barns. They don't put no labor into it. They, the reaping is the only thing they do is wherever they're at and what they want, they take. It's not a reaping because reaping is, has to do with harvesting. Meaning sowing first. How many understand the process is simple? You sow, you harvest, and therefore you have reaped. But if they don't sow, they can't harvest and they can't reap. All they can do is get what is put out for them. And again, it says, Yet your heavenly fathers feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Well, I don't know about you, but I know that I'm made in his image and in his likeness and for his pleasure. And as far as I'm concerned, I am a child of God. I am for his pleasure. I am to praise him, to honor him, to glorify him. And I, if the birds of the air can be provided for, I have no question God will provide my need. He'll watch after me. He'll take care of me. If you love him, say amen. Glory to God. Verse 27, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit? Unto his stature. <laughs> Boy, we've thought about it, hadn't we? A lot of times we get to thinking about how, how big we are and how small we're getting. Or I, I talked to somebody just recently and I said, you concern me because you're not eating. I said, you're, you're getting so small, you, you really aren't. And, the, and they responded to me, well, don't get to worrying about it. I said, well, I'm not going to worry about it. I said, that's between you and God. <laughs> I said, but I am concerned that well, don't be concerned until I get down to 90 pounds. Mm. I said, can you imagine what you're going to look like at 90 pounds? I said, what do you weigh now, 108? I mean, it don't sound like a lot, but 
and, and they never did answer me, so I'm not certain what their weight is, but my point was even 20 more pounds from where you are right now, or 18, it would be devastating. How would you sustain life? God right here tells us, which of you by taking thought, don't worry, you can't change it. You're not going to work. Now, I'm not talking about watching your diet. I'm talking about starvation. I'm talking about, you know, people that literally do the things to their bodies to take away from their ability to gain nutrients in their life. I'm talking about people that don't eat properly. They never take in a balanced meal. They never have enough vitamins in their life. They're constantly having colds. There go David. <laughs> I think it's something else I'm not cleansing properly. It's <laughs> that, yeah. There we go. <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean, don't you, Carrie? Yeah, there we go. And any rest of you want to know, see me after church. I'll talk to you about it. It's nothing personal. <laughs> Just, there you are. He said, and why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, now this is the verse that kicks, watch this, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, you can take that one verse. Just, Sherry, I preach that one verse all night. Just the lilies in the field and the beauty they are in the sight of God, but even the millions or billions of dollars of gold, silver, and, and, and all the effort that went into building the temple, the tabernacle that Solomon built, his daddy had laid aside, David had laid aside millions of hundreds of millions of dollars of value. And everything that went into that was, was so beautiful. They say, I can't even imagine. I wish we could have seen. I wish we could see something that precious. Well, one day we will. One day we'll see something far more precious than that. One day we'll be able to enter into, imagine, uh, a heaven. Uh, I still didn't get it right. What is it again? Beyond imagination, or beyond imagine. Yeah, beyond imagination, heaven. I'll get it here in a few days. <laughs> beyond imagination. I mean, we've all heard about it, right? But right here, Jesus told these young men and women that were listening to him, very plainly, he said, even Solomon, with everything he had about himself. Now, we said the other day, okay, Solomon's sitting at the table, here comes Mephibosheth down the hall. Now, I'm jumping off to another, to, but follow me. Here's Mephibosheth. Remember, uh, what's her name? Ta Tamara was the sister, half-sister that was raped by her half-brother. And Amnon, he, he, he's sitting there, and, and the, the, there's, there's beauty, there's wisdom, there's grace, all at the table, and there's Solomon, David. I mean, David's the king, but Solomon's there with all that wisdom. And here comes Mephibosheth walking down across the hall because David said, never again will you eat out there again. You'll eat at my table, the king's table, from now on. Crippled, no clothes, no good things, but they put them on him. He got them, but never does it show anywhere in the Word of God that Mephibosheth ever had his legs healed. But he got to stay there. What's the point? God loved Mephibosheth enough like he loved the little lilies of the field. Now think about it. A lily, how beautiful it is. Solomon, even all that wisdom and beauty still didn't compare to what God gave to just a little lily growing outside in the field. That's amazing. To think about that's who we are. We're that precious to God. And he goes on, he says, and, 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 and wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O oh, ye of little faith. <laughs> Therefore, take no thought. Let me change those three words. Do not worry. Take no thought. Do not worry. That's what he's saying. Saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek but joy. He said, for your heavenly Father knoweth 
that you have need of all these things. How many believe tonight that God knows where you are? Physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, in every capacity of life, God knows exactly where you are. He knows what you're hurting in. He knows where you're hurting at. He knows what to do about it. He knows everything that will come across in your life. There is nothing going to surprise him. So why would we worry about the things that we can't even control? We're supposed to stay focused on the contribution we make to the kingdom of God. What's our contribution? Staying positive-minded, looking to help somebody else along the way. I still like Generation for Hope. Helping other people every day. Isn't that what it's supposed to be? Judy, do you or Paul or Michelle know where Robert Dawn got that? Does anybody know? I, I've never heard him say. The hope, the acronym, yeah. Yes, I've heard him say that. How about that? Brother Jim Angle, in his message, I've heard him say it more than once. If you see a mouth, you feed it. If you see a need, you meet it. And, and, and again, helping other people every day. That's what we're supposed to be about, about trying to set up a standard that the devil can't cross. Keep in mind something. We never sin until we get in the flesh. Uh-oh, that needs to come out again. You don't sin unless you get in the flesh. When you get into the flesh, because the, the blood can't sin. If you stay under the blood and stay in the covenant of God, you can't, you can't do wrong. You can't make mistakes. You can't make sin because it's contrary to the Word of God. So if we'll stay focused-minded on, on the blood and on the, on the Spirit of God, we'll always be all right. And helping other people every day can't be a wrong thing. I have a little mantra that I always use, and it's simply just that how can you go wrong going right? You know, you're not going to. Stay focused. Glory to God. Verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Oh, how many times we quote this verse or talk about this verse. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. In other words, seek after the mighty power of God, the will of God. It, it, the, what's that mighty power going to do? That will, that righteousness, it will destroy the demonic forces of hell. It has the authority to put that in check. And that's the only thing. When we look at the righteousness of Jesus Christ, we are supposed to seek after that and all the things that we're going to be needed are going to be added unto us. So in other words, whenever we stay focused-minded on the blood, focused on Jesus Christ, not worrying about what we can't do anything about anyway, we're going to have the power of God to do things like heal the sick, like to uh, save the sinners. You say, I can't save anybody. No, but God can through you. Amen, Pastor. Verse 34, take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Oh, my. I've been asking everybody for an amplified Bible. Tonight I kept my phone in my pocket. You got it. Brother Kelly, come up here and uh, well, just stand up and read it loud. Verse 34. Yep, verse 34. Last verse. Say the last line again. Wow. Mm -hmm. So in other words, Jesus was telling them that if you're going to be sitting around thinking about the worry of what tomorrow is going to bring and how bad or, or, or inadequate it may be for us, you haven't got any idea yet. You're wasting the day that God has given you and that you're supposed to be working profitably in because all things are profitable according to the word of God that are under the spirit so we, we can't waste our day thinking about tomorrow because tomorrow's going to have a whole new set of issues they're going to be there but God said nothing 
will be above what I can bring you. Let, I want to look it up in, in one other translation. Unless you have that too, who has, who has the New Living Translation? Anybody got the NLT? All right. May I share it with you? No? Okay, thank you. So don't worry about tomorrow. For, no, for tomorrow's going to bring its own worries. Like I said, there's going to be enough of them. Don't be, don't be holding back. Now listen to this part. Today's trouble is enough for today. Why worry about tomorrow? You've already got enough issues to handle today. We shouldn't be concerned about over what we don't even know yet. We need to handle what we do have. Always remember, nothing new but still true. That is this, that yesterday is a canceled check. Tomorrow is a promissory note, and the only thing you've got spendable is today. That's all we have. So we need to use it the very best we can for the glory of God. Now, I wasn't picking when I said earlier about a good old-fashioned Holy Ghost altar service. If we ever needed a good old-fashioned Holy Ghost move of God, we need it. We need that. We need to see the power of God again come because we've got children sitting around here that hadn't even been able to see it happen. They're not to witness it. And why? It's us. We're somewhere being reserved and held back thinking we got to do this, this, or this. Well, really what we need to do is say, Lord, have your way. Thy will be done. That's what's going to move people. That's what's going to save souls. That's what's going to deliver people from addictions. That's what's going to change lives when we let the Holy Ghost have His way. Amen? If you love Him, stand with me. Thank you, Lord. Some of you have been here for a good while. Some of you expected beyond imagination, heaven. See, I got it. I'm slow, but I got it. Come back next Wednesday night. Or maybe Sunday night. I don't know. Pastor Wanda might look at me and tell me, I need to have an extra night. Pray for her. She, she's put much study into it. And I'll assure you, I told you the first week, I, I found out two things for certain, and I think three, but two for certain that I didn't know. And she's already told me a couple things while she was studying yesterday and today that I thought, hmm. Wow. So please, get ready for this teaching. It's strong. It's good. But we talk about hell fire, and there's nothing wrong with doing it. We should. Jesus talked more about hell than he did heaven. He, 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 did, he worked more toward telling people to avoid that. But we hardly ever get focused on, think about it now, beyond. The Word of God, the, the verse that she's chosen as the text, it not entered into eye. Eye has not seen and ear has not heard. Neither hath it entered into the heart of man that which he has prepared for those that love him. That's amazing. When we think of some of the good, pretty things we've seen, and I, we've been around quite a few places in life. I've been very fortunate. We've seen a lot of beautiful things. I mean, most everybody here. But we haven't even scratched the surface of what God has prepared for us. Do you love him tonight? Praise God. Are all hearts clear? Does anyone need prayer? Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you again. Let us pray together. Father God, once more, in Jesus' name, I believe. Oh, how I believe, Lord. I believe your holy, infallible, inerrant word. I stand with it, Lord, tonight as the blessing of my life. For in it lies the deliverance of the covenant and the relationship of that atonement of Calvary. Lord, inside of that atonement lies every need to be met. And our prayer tonight is that we, the body of Christ, would take to heart that which we've been given freely and learn to freely give away for the glory of your kingdom. We love you, Lord. Keep us safe as we travel and let everything we say, think, and do be something that you would be honored with and honored by. In Jesus' holy name, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you tonight. Thank you for being with us. And please come back now.